But this is an absolute fail. I've set up this whole setup and this camera won't do what I want it to do, what I hoped it would do. And it's not a big ask what I'm asking. What a fail. So I've had this idea that uh, I wanted to do for quite a while, but the technology really wasn't available. I need a small camera with a wide angle view that shoots raw images in a sequence to do a proper hyperlapse time lapse. But there just wasn't a camera small enough, not even the GoPro. Okay, let's rewind that a bit. I just realized how filming on this new camera that I'm testing on this shoot uh, and not selecting face tracking because face tracking before ruined uh, the gimbal option leads to no focus on me, but focus on the background. So yeah, unfortunately, the first few clips in this video will be slightly out of focus. And then came out the Osmo Pocket number one that did shoot raw photos, but not when in time-lapse mode. So we had to wait for another year or so, and then the Pocket 2 came out that I'm filming on right now. It's pretty good for vlogging. It's got a gimbal built in. The face tracking is so-so, but it's got the time-lapse feature where it can save raw files as well as create a video or just JPEGs. That's the raw files that we're interested in at an interval of a minimum four seconds, which is not ideal, but it is something. It's a start and it's small and it's got a 1.8 20 millimeter wider sensor, so that might work. And here we are, here's the place where I want to execute the idea. The idea of a time-lapse that hopefully will sell as editorial, because we've got London Eye behind us. But it should be an amazing time-lapse. We've got some clouds, I want to do it daytime as well as at nighttime. Basically, trying to slide through with this camera, through this circular railing that you can see. Because I was inspired by quite a few photos, specifically shared by my friend, uh, Josh Parrott. He did some daytime and nighttime photos, and it's a really, really cool shot. And the only thing to add to that shot was I thinking always for a long, long time, I need something small enough that shoots raw photos. It can do a time-lapse sliding through that circular railing. So this is what we're gonna try to do today. Right, I think I'm finally here where I needed to be. I've uh, set everything up and I think this is kind of working. I've uh, run a video test without the NDs on, so it's not a time-lapse, just a back and forth. I've got the angle right. It starts with the right side of the London Eye being on this side of this railing, and then it slides through. I can show it to you how it kind of works. And so it starts from here, and then when it moves in, it sort of dives right underneath this in a slightly different position because currently the pocket is off and just slides underneath the railing. The slider is at the moment in a back and forth motion just for demonstration purposes. Now I'm going to mount the uh, ND filter and uh, connect all the, start the time lapse on the um, Osmo pocket. Then I'm going to connect back through Bluetooth to the slider and start the slide. So that's what I'm doing now. It took quite a long time to set this up at that perfect angle. It was a challenge, I must say. 
Unfreaking believable. So the one thing I did not test is will the DJI Pocket 2 actually time lapse, start the time lapse in flashlight mode? And it won't. It will only initialize a time lapse if it's upright. <laughs> Irrespective if you're shooting through Wi-Fi or the camera, the warning message doesn't let you start the time-lapse. So the only thing I could do was to call customer service, and in this case it was the owner of the camera, Charles, my friend, both hemispheres on Instagram. So we spoke for a prolonged period of time, he posted this issue on the DJI forums, and we actually got nowhere because they obviously didn't respond. And then 15 or 20 minutes later I decided to do something different. And if you know me, I am a stubborn one and I don't give up easily. So I figured out that the only way to do a time lapse shooting raw images at long exposures, because I've put the ND1000 here, um, is to actually set this up in video mode. So for 20 minutes, it'll be sliding from one end all the way to the other, while I'll be controlling the Pocket 2 in standard photos mode. And every four seconds, I will just click the next photo, next photo, click, Next photo, click. Just count one, two, three, four, click. And then it won't be perfect. The intervals won't be perfect, but I'll have at least a raw full time lapse going through it. And that's what I was doing for the past 20 minutes. Now I'm gonna dismount the Pocket 2, charge it because it dried pretty much the whole battery and get ready for the same time lapse that I want to do at night when the London Eye will be lit up. And I think this time lapse will look amazing in a showreel. So, that's what I'm here. And that's all the B-roll I filmed that evening because around sunset time, when it started to get darker, there was more of these uh, groups of youngsters hanging around that area that I was pretty sure that what they were doing there was uh, pickpocketing on the people walking there with families, uh, photographers that were there. And you know, you gotta cut them some slack because pickpocketing isn't a profession that you can do at home during lockdown. There's only a certain amount of uh, items that you can steal from other members of your household, I'm guessing. Hence, they have to practice and be excluded from lockdown. Hence, they were doing it around Westminster Bridge area. It is quite funny that uh, that's where the new Scotland Yard is. And actually, about two years ago, one of my friends literally outside of New Scotland Yard had their camera bag stolen where they were filming um, some um, events going on on the London Eye pre-New Year's Eve. But coming back to... Um, yeah, me stopping any b-roll. I decided to not shoot any of the explaining parts of this video and just focus on doing the motion time lapse at night. But before we get to the final time lapse that I did at night, I want to show you the time lapses that I got at daytime clicking manually and they came out surprisingly well. You literally cannot see the sort of jerkiness in the movement because the interval wasn't constant that I was expecting. It came out pretty decent. And here's how they came out. So after getting these three time lapses that I was already pretty pleased with, I thought I can actually squeeze in the camera actually through that middle bit of that um, spinning railing rather than going underneath it. It took me another half an hour, if not more, to adjust the two sides of the tripod legs with the slider to that perfect angle. I did a few tests and actually, it worked out and I got the perfect angle. And a couple of things that I changed is I took off the ND1000 because it was already nighttime, so I didn't have to put a filter in front to make a long exposure. But instead of shooting on the 20 millimeter standard camera built in lens, I decided to throw in the original DJI um, wide angle adapter that changes that lens to more of a 14 millimeter look. And again, I didn't have to put any filters on in front of that 14 millimeter wide angle adapter. Also because you cannot, because the magnets aren't in front. So 
if you put a 40 millimeter wide angle adapter, that's it. You cannot put any filters in front. And with that wider angle, I actually really enjoyed the wider angle. I decided to do this one last motion time lapse. I've set everything up. I decided to point perfectly inside that middle railing. And this is what I got. And I'm ridiculously happy with that result. And isn't that just epic? Like, I mean, it's one of my favorite motion time lapses I think I've ever done. I absolutely love how it uh, came out. I will definitely be putting it on the stock sides that I'm using, and I'm using Blackbox. If you know from some of my previous videos, Blackbox distributes to multiple stock sides, and I only have to upload and do the keywords and everything to one site. So I do like them for that reason. But it will be also part of my upcoming showreel that I'm working on, and either will be the top shot that will be either at the end of the video or the opening shot. I don't know yet. I, I'm, I'm thinking where to put it, but I love how this time lapse turned out. Thanks a lot for sticking out with me on this longer video in the journey of half being on location and half now explaining in the studio because that's the only way I was able to finish this video explaining you what went on in the second part of this shoot. And if it's your first time watching a video on my channel, my name is Michael Thomas, I'm a London-based time-lapse travel and architecture photographer, and this channel is all about shooting cool vistas and views all around London in uh, time-lapse occasionally, also photos and videos, architecture, and very not much of a travel lately because of obviously what's going on. And occasionally you get to see some uh, gear reviews, but only of the things that I really use, already want to use in the future. I can't be bothered doing gear reviews of things that I will just never implement into my production workflow. So I guess that's that. Um, hopefully you will subscribe, like the video, and maybe even comment uh, of other kinds of similar time lapses that I showed you in this video, where around London uh, or in the world you would like to see this uh, motion time lapse sliding through something and then revealing a beautiful, iconic composition that would do well on stock sides. That's it, guys. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.